Hotty ho, my little audio angels. We got a cool one for you today. Yes, this is the Channel Audio Group's official podcast. We are the fastest and largest audio podcast in the nation. And uh, yeah, I'd fact check me on that too. Now, today we're going to get into something a little crazy. And it's understanding how a basic PA system works. You might be thinking PA, Pennsylvania, nah. PA like Paul, not your papa. No, no, no. We are talking about the public address system. Now, many people in need of renting a PA system for their event may have little to no idea of how a typical PA works, thus leading to the possibility of renting a system either too large or too small for the event's requirements. One unique feature of a PA system is that no two are alike. While many manufacturers might make every component that a system needs, it is common to mix and match components from different manufacturers, usually stemming from an engineer's personal preferences. This guide will explain the basic parts and functions of the most common types of PA systems, basic setups with ground-supported speakers. We won't be getting into large-scale concert PA systems with line arrays in this uh, podcast. No, no, no. Those type of systems deserve their own post. So let's uh, get like the Olympics and dive right in. So what is a PA system? Now that you understand that it's actually called a public address system, you're basically halfway there. The origins of the PA system dates back to the 1910s, when the Automatic Electric Company of Chicago, Illinois, announced it had developed a loudspeaker, which it marketed under the name of Automatic Enunciator. By 1913, multiple units were installed throughout the Comiskey Park Baseball Stadium, both to make announcements and to provide musical interludes. Charles Comiskey was quoted as saying, the day of the megaphone man has passed. Don't worry, he didn't die, he just moved on. PA systems don't just refer to the speaker cabinets prevalent at music venues and festivals. Any system of one or more speakers designed to replicate audio or speech to a group of people qualifies as a PA system. However, for the purpose of this podcast, we're just going to talk about the typical concert and event PA systems. Now, you're going to want to know the ins and outs of these things, so let's jump on in. The thing that we're going to focus first on are the speakers. That's the first main component that comes to mind when thinking about PA systems and is the most important one. PA speakers come in countless different shapes and sizes, kind of like people. There are three main types of PA speakers. Mains, sometimes referred to as tops, subwoofers, sometimes referred to as bottoms, and stage monitors. Each type of speaker serves as a different function within the system, but each depend on each other. First, let's jump on over to those tops. Those main speakers create the bulk of the PA sound. In basic PA systems, the main speakers are either placed on speaker stands or mounted on the subwoofers. Main speakers in your basic PA system are normally sized between 10 and 15, with a smaller tweeter speaker above the woofer. Now, the subwoofers are larger than the main speakers and produce lower frequencies than the mains. This has the effect of filling out the sound that the ear will hear. Subwoofers are typically speakers that are about 15 to 20, and although dual 12-inch subs have become more common, To separate the sound of the subwoofers and mains, a crossover unit will almost always be employed. The crossover is usually racked mounted and separated from the signal going through it by frequency, sending lower frequencies to the subwoofers and higher ones to the mains. An important part of tuning a PA system is selecting the correct crossover frequency for the room in which the PA is situated. Now let's get to those stage monitors. They're usually positioned near the performer or speaker to help them hear themselves. They are on a separate mix than the mains and subs, also known as the front of house speakers. Many main speakers are purpose designed to also act as stage monitors if so required. Stage monitors are usually on the ground tilted at an angle towards the performer. Now let's get into the next component we should be considering and that is the amplifiers. PA speakers can be either passive or active. Active speakers have an internal amplifier of their own, while passive speakers have no internal amplifier 
and will require an external amplifier to convert the line level signal of the mixer to a level where it can drive the speaker to the necessary volume. Amplifiers can be an expensive item, but deservedly so. In a passive PA system, you are trusting the entirety of the system's sound to just one component. Let's move on to the next component, and that is going to be those mixing consoles. A mixing console is one of the most important parts of a PA system. And like other PA components, the options on the market are endless. A mixing board will have a set number of channels and is responsible for combing sounds, routing, and changing the volume level, the tone color, or dynamics of many different audio signals. Inputs on a mixer are commonly XLR and TRS, and that's going to be about a quarter of an inch. A mixer can provide phantom power for the capacitor microphones, pan control on each channel, and monitoring mixes for the stage monitors. Most mixing consoles will have left and right main outputs and individual outputs known as auxiliary sends, most commonly used for stage monitors or effects. Cabling, just jump right into it. To connect to the components of a PA system and transmit audio signal, various cabling is required. PA speakers most commonly take one of three forms of cable, XLR, TRS, or Speak On. Mixers and amplifiers usually have main outputs and inputs of both XLR and TRS. Some amplifiers can have a form of RCA outputs called banana cabling. Using the correct cabling when setting up a PA is vitally important. If wrong cables and or connectors are used, equipment may not operate correctly. In the worst case scenario, using the wrong cables or connectors can be dangerous. Ooh, spooky. Now. Let's jump on to our next component, and that's effects. An optional yet common component of a typical PA system is effects. Many modern mixers will have onboard effects. However, effects paired with a PA system are usually outboard, meaning standalone units. Common effects paired with a PA system are reverb, compression, delay, gates, and equalizers. Now, let's get on to the next component, because there are many many more. Sound sources. PA systems have various application. Thus, there are a variety of common sound sources for PA systems. The most common source is the sound from a microphone. Microphones also have a variety of uses and placements, ranging from vocal mics, instrument mics, and room mics. PA systems are also great at reproducing already recorded music. Music can be played through a PA system by feeding the sound through one or more channels on the mixer. Now, we're going to just do one more component because I lied. So, the very last one, and I'm guessing also another important one, is operation. Operating even a simple PA system can be frustrating. Erg. Although rewarding. Yay! For many small scale events such as speeches and conferences, little to no tweaking of the settings on the mixer is required after sound checked. However, for large-scale productions, such as concerts, it is imperative that an engineer is present to mix the sound for the duration of the event. Due to the complex nature of music, vital changes to the PA system sound are often required constantly. Those renting a PA system can often regret opting to forego hiring an engineer, as they found out quickly that their event sound required much more attention to detail. Alrighty, folks, and that's all I got for you today. I know this was a very riveting podcast from the Channel Audio Group. And remember, don't ever hesitate to reach out to us if you have any questions about what you may have just heard. So, gentlemen, ladies, everything in between, signing off, thank you.